I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, actually, Stacy brought this to my attention in regards to um, Jackie Johnson and the project she has with packing backpacks for students in Fulton County. And um, if I get this correctly, I think you've packed 657 backpacks for kids in Fulton County this year, yeah. raised over $11,000. So, if you'd like to share more about your program and kind of those hidden heroes in the community that help our students get ready for school. Okay. Hi, I'm Jackie Johnson with Fulton County Pack a Backpack. I started this program in Fulton County in 2006. At that time, I was probably giving out um, 50 to 75 backpacks. Then we started um, mostly my business and my um, staff. We were just kind of doing it on our own, and then we realized how much the need was. So in 2010, we incorporated it and um, made it a 501c3. So now we are a nonprofit organization. So that opened the door to state and government grants. The Fulton County Community Foundation has been amazing um, in helping us with some of our grants. And United Way um, helps us too. So that, those are some local um, organizations that has um, pitched in and helped us tremendously. Um, it is really humbling for people to come and ask for help, but there is no, there is an application process with Fulton County Pack a Backpack, but it's not to determine your income and to see, you know, how much, or to ask how much you make, or am I asking any personal information. The registration process is only to see how many families that I have to help that year. So we start the process around May, right when school ends. We had 230 families sign up with us this year, and 657 fully packed backpacks. We go off of your guys' list and we pack them. Not only is it Rochester Community Schools that benefit from our program, we also help our neighboring towns. The only step stipulation is, is you need to reside in Fulton County. However, we were so blessed this year that we opened it up to Argus. And what you, they, they can come and we also opened it up to full cast and students. They do not have to live in Fulton County. So we've kind of opened it. I don't know if we'll be able to do that next year. It was just, we just had so much, so many things were given to us. It was a truly a blessing, so we thought we would share. We do have school supplies and we offer help throughout the year. So if you have a new student that comes into town and they need help, you can give us a call. Um, we do have our own phone number now and if you like our um, Facebook page, you'll get it there. But you can also always call Tidewater and um, we keep extra school supplies there. <coughs> so if a new student comes in, um, they can come and we will um, give them a backpack full of school supplies. Channel 16 gave us 75 backpacks a couple weeks ago. We went and picked it up. They um, include us in their drive as well. But South Bend starts a lot later than we do, so we had already handed out the school supplies. So what I would like to do is take at least 10 backpacks to each school instead of me storing them at my office. 75 is a lot. <laughs> So you guys can store it. So if someone does come into school, you just give them a, a backpack. They don't have to come to Tidewater and you know, ask for assistance from yet another person because sometimes it's hard to ask for help. So if that's okay with the school board, we would like to deliver 10 um, backpacks full of school supplies to each school for you guys to store this year. And if you run out, we have more. That's wonderful, Jake, because I know a lot of the teachers buy supplies out of their own pockets too, so that would be a resource for them as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, a couple years ago, we had a, a lot of money, um, extra money, not a lot, but extra money. So we bought the um, Rochester High School Math Department. Each teacher got scientific calculators. Um, so they kept them. So when the student showed up and they didn't have a scientific calculator, they could just borrow one from the school. And we were able that year to buy the teachers post-its and highlighters. You know, post-its are kind of expensive. You know? <laughs> it's a thing that, you know, everyone uses, but they're kind of expensive. So teachers, if you guys need help, just give us a call. We have so many supplies left this year. And I'm storing them, so call me. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, I'll see you on Wednesday.
I'm sorry. On behalf of the board, I just merely in the voice, thank you very much. We always say thank you to our donors, but it really, truly is sincerely appreciated. And sometimes we, we are so very given, we realize, or we sometimes don't realize just how many people need that assistance. So thank you, and it's a treasure to be able to do that for us. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me tonight. I have another meeting I have to attend across town, so I will see you guys later. All right, you guys have a great night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Consent items B, uh, there are the minutes from the July 16th regular board executive session and minutes from the August 6th study session. Of course, I'll ask if anybody has any questions. Is there any objection to looking them all in one approval and vote? In that case, are there any questions or concerns for the minutes of the July 16th regular board meeting? Any questions or comments for the certification of July 16th executive session? Any questions or comments on the minutes of the two, or I'm sorry, the August 6, 2018 study session? Any questions or comments on the minutes of the August 6, 2018 special board meeting? In that case, is there a motion to approve consent items B, 1, 2, and 3, and 4 as read, or as discussed? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. Second. Uh, I'm going to go with Steve first because I heard him because he was closest. <laughs> All in favor of approving items one through four on the consent items B, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Okay. Financial reports. Um, approval of claims number 13 or 13843 through 14054, totaling $1,681,188.88. <coughs> Questions for Tom on those claims? I had a question about the Green Plus. Um, that was kind of near the end. Yes, that would be claim 13985. Um, that was over $20,000. So it was. Yeah, and I'll let Oscar and some of the other administrators jump in as well. That is for a three-year um, contract with the company, so it's about 7000 per year. And what we're doing is trying to uh, eliminate some programs, and then it also duplicated some programs. So, Oscar, if you'd like to share um, the academic portion of that. I just sent you something through email that includes everything that I have. Um, so the contract is for 21000 in three years, which is 7000 per year. But at RMS, we're going to eliminate our Scholastic Reading Inventory, our Reading Counts Program, eliminate buying hardback vocabulary books, and then also the Read Naturally Program that our Special Ed Department utilizes. And per year, those four things together add up to $9,974.50. And so in the end, it'll be a savings. Um, we piloted this program last year in eighth grade language arts and we tracked who were part of Reading Plus, and we had a sample of uh, our gen ed kids, our high ability students, and our uh, special needs population. And I included some data on there for you. Um, the average reading score on our NWEA was six points higher for the kids who were in the Reading Plus program. And then also our language arts scores were seven points higher. Um, and our observed growth was about three and a half points higher in language arts versus the um, non-reading plus students. And so we saw a lot of growth there um, with our NWA testing. Um, it provides the lexile level, the fluency level, the comprehension level, and vocabulary level of all of our kids. Uh, we took that uh, assessment right here at the beginning of the year, and we're off and running with this program on Individualized Wednesdays. Um, and I know our English de department's 100% behind it because it took me a couple years to get reading counts kind of phased out, and this program really sold them on that when they saw that. Um, it has an independent reading portion and a guided reading portion where it'll black out the text except for right where the kids are reading, which helps them increase their fluency, which leads them to higher comprehension and um, more vocabulary. And it has a separate vocabulary component which eliminates the ten dollars and fifty cents per student for those vocabulary books, which will help with savings for our kiddos. So, 
it reaches all the way from high ability down to our um, lowest special needs kids in our life skills program, some of them. So it's going to be very beneficial. We're going to see a lot more growth in our NWA than what we've seen in the past with our whole student body. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Get your ears out of fashion? That's fine. That was, I should. No, I just want to make sure. The fact of breaking it down $7,000 per year, I just sure. realized it's a three year contract. Sure. And Todd, I think you usually help you out on any here for a couple. We usually have payrolls or payrolls, unless anybody has questions on that. We generally go to the funds report, I believe, and we ask for any questions just to help save you time. And maybe you already knew that. And, and just to point out, under the payrolls, there is an oddity there on the 8618 for $175. And that was um, we had an employee who helped horse buses over the summer. And um, Brenda Troyer was very apologetic. She missed that, and we wanted to make sure that we issued that pay. And so once it was brought to our attention, we immediately issued that. So that's why you see a separate pay there that would have come out of transportation funds. But we wanted to honor that employee's uh, check at that pay period. And just, uh, it's just an oversight on our part. So that's why you see that oddity there. Any questions for general? The um, funds report, the, the general fund uh, month to date expenditures of $816,490.32. Uh, Luke, is my head in the way? Never. Better than that. Now it's all too small anyway. So <laughs> you really can't read it back here. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> Said the glare off of it was <laughs> um, And those expenditures, um, month ending cash balance was six hundred eleven thousand seventeen dollars ninety eight cents. Debt service, um, there were no expenditures. Um, cash balance um, two million two hundred sixty one thousand two hundred ninety four dollars and seventy nine cents. Capital projects, um, monthly expenditures of $47,934.99, leaving a cash balance of $1,123,449.62. And on that, I think not only did we just get our funds, but one thing we knew that Denise and Todd aren't seeing that I'm definitively seeing in the office is what we used to have to um, put into the different HVAC systems and different uh, pieces and parts and the labor and those types of things and really starting to see that add up and I think we're just beginning now to see some of the reflection from the LED project that we did and, and starting to see those bills start to come down. So um, I think that that's the reason that we can maintain that and keep that a little healthier than we have been in the past. Transportation fund, um, a monthly expense of $20,387 five cents uh, monthly cash balance or month end cash balance of one million one hundred and twelve thousand three dollars and fifty four cents the bus replacement fund had no expenditures um, finished the cash balance of two hundred and seventy two thousand three hundred and eighty one dollars and one cent any questions comments critiques I have a question. Um, in the year over year analysis down in the corner, which was something new that Val brought to us, and I'm thankful that you guys are continuing on with that because I find that very helpful. But I think there might be a miscalculation, so just before we approve it, I wanted to double check that. So it said that last year our ending balance was $915,793.78. And our cash balance right now is $611,017.98. But in the year over year comparison, that says that we are down um, almost half a million dollars. It would appear that the person didn't update that formula. They are prepared this. It's like I, a typo, I, yeah. and I it's, totally get that. I just want to make sure before we approve that. You know, I, that the name really catch our attention. <laughs> well, I, that should have caught your attention. No, that is a typo. That's my mistake. <laughs> typo is much easier, more easily corrected than a lot of other things could be. So good. <laughs> Any 
Any other questions for Todd? In that case, before we get to the budget presentation, is there any objection to uh, approving the uh, financial report all the way through funds, items one through three? In that case, is there a motion to approve the uh, financial report items one through three? So moved. Motion made by Jenny. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving financial report sections one through please see, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. And then to number four, the presentation and board consent to advertise the 2019 budget. Okay. copy of the PowerPoint. Um, Valerie prepared this, so um, thankful that she took the time to, to do that for Denise and I. Um, it starts off with the change of the uh, of, of how we're going to look at our money. Um, the general fund was split in education and operation funds and capital projects, transportation, bus replacement will all fall into operations. Debt service will of course stay by itself. <coughs> Some important dates, um, August 27th is the deadline for the uh, notice of the public hearing. Um, bus replacement of the CPF plan is the Sentinel. Um, that will enable the public hearing to be held on the 17th because the deadlines. Um, all that goes to, goes to plan the budget will be able to be adopted on the 15th of October. November 1st is the deadline to advertise the budget in the gateway. The history of uh, where we've sat the last five years with, our, with the different funds. Todd, just so you, if you would, would you speak loudly because I know I watched and I hear people watch this on our TC board and we're very soft spoken. It's hard for me here. So I'm sorry. I'm not no, that's okay. I, I'm it. not. I'm trying to. Uh, Make sure that I, I don't uh, stutter and, and I get my point across. So. I usually stutter, but I can know it like a best that. Well, I, I've got my moments. <laughs> um, it's just a review of, of last year's budget. Shows where we're at with the rainy day uh, fund at the moment. And I believe that everything that we're presenting this evening, there won't be any changes to the rainy and we'll remain status quo and we'll those funds there. So the next, this shows the uh, I think this is where, as a board and as a public, we're going to start to see those differences, and I don't need this stuff on your toes. I know it's just a lot to take on in a new position, but these are those things we've been talking about uh, as a board and in our study sessions for several months now, probably six months maybe we've been talking about that. So you're going to start to see this look a little bit differently than you have in years past when you've been on the board as we start to break those down and still um, a, a few questions that you may have been asked that Denise, Todd, and I still may not be able to answer because they're still uh, trying to gather that at the state and as we send questions they realize maybe that they haven't 100% thought it through on all angles so we'll do the best we can to cover what we know and what we've learned thus far so that's why you're starting to see that breakdown um, and no longer see the words general fund but you start to see educational fund and operational fund. Well to defend, to defend you Jan and I will take the heat on this one a lot of times the state give us guidelines, but they don't realize what those guidelines are, what they entail. So that is not our fault. You ask questions, and they still don't know the answer to them. We have to run with those on the block. Right? And, we're, and we're getting a lot of those answers. They're really, they really are starting to narrow those down. I think uh, it's just a little bit frustrating because we were under the impression that maybe June or July we would have all of those answers, and they're still filtering in, and so we're still making those adjustments here at this end. But it's starting to to, to calm itself and. and um, are being able to know what we need to do to shift the funds and what categories they're going to go in. I don't know that we're stumbling across as many that we're not sure where to place at this point. Shows projected expenditures of the, uh, in the education fund in 2019. This is the end of the list. Projected 
expenditures of the debt service fund. Operation expenditures of 2019. Projects part of the operations fund expenditures projected for next year. And transportation projected expenditures. Bus replacement plan. So I think it's just very, very important as we continue to have these conversations over the next few months. January 1st, when we wake up and you start pulling out the counts, it's going to look as if we're extremely healthy when really we, we have the same amount of funds that we're carrying over. They're just going to be into the, in, the, in those two funds. And so we're going to have those conversations with teachers, with the association. And we need to make sure that we understand what we're transferring from account to account and that the board is aware, the teachers are aware, because there's going to have to be that constant shuffling with some of those funds um, as the monies come in to make sure that they get divvied out into the right line items in each of the funds. So five funds going down to three, and mixing and matching two of them into one, and mm -hmm. so it's still rather complicated. I'm just saying it more or less for the people who watch this, so if they're not smart like I'm not smart, it helps put it in layman terms. Yeah, and, and we'll see those same transfers. We'll talk to you about it each month, and, and then quarterly, and those types of things, so you understand what's happening, why it's moving, and why it has to move. Normally, and we always do at the end, allow public comment. I know this is just the approval or the uh, board consent to advertise the 2019 budget, but I will ask the public if there are any questions as of right now for that. And I will allow it at the meeting as well. Tim, I know you're good on that stuff too, so. Open oh, yet? Yeah. And this will be advertised, it will be submitted to Gateway Advertised in the Sentinel, and it will, will be on our website as well, so the public does have a chance to review it. And I think for Rochester schools, just because I know that Tim's interested and I appreciate his support, and we've talked to the administrative team, it's going to allow us some local flexibility in some of those areas because we do have a very healthy transportation account. So it'll allow some, fle some flexibility, but we just still need to be aware that there are still expenses in those areas. And so it's not all um, free money or all uh, money that we can expend on whatever. We still need to make sure we're paying those bills, but it'll bring it in in a different, different respect for us. Any public other questions for Jen publicly for the budget right now? I know it's early, but I want to at least have the opportunity. Is there a motion to consent to advertise the 2000? I'm sorry, any other questions from the board for Jana or for Todd? And we've all got Denise here that we're. What, where are you? You're temporary, you're learning. I'm kind of Yeah, and I'm not, yeah, but we'll see what I mean. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent to advertise the 2019 budget? <coughs> motion made by Steve. Second by Sandy. All in favor of consenting to advertise the 2019 budget, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Student and stakeholder focused donations. Uh, donations as presented will be first from the First Presbyterian Ladies School Supplies for Columbia School. Uh, the second one would be good to go oil on 4th Street, several cases of ice salt for the sidewalks, and a case of plastic cups to Columbia School. So Mr. Snyder can play cups in his office, is that right? No, not those kind of cups. <laughs> not those kind of cups. Okay. <laughs> Teacher Credit Union Challenge Coins, uh, and then added uh, Friday at 210, the Rochester, Rochester Kiwanis Club, $200 for a high school key club. Any other donations? Not that I'm aware of it. Look at candy. Yeah, it's early in the year. Yeah. <laughs> well, as always, and, and this is the one part I try to hit. I know we as a board try to hit every time just to say thank you and look in the camera and say thank you for the public, just like we did with Jackie on the backpacks. It, it means so much to a lot of the kids at schools because it's those little things that we may not always have that the community does take care of. So, sincerely from all of us, thank you for those donations and those people and organizations that did so. Any questions on the donation from the board? I have. Yes, I was going to ask Jackie. 
and the two take donations like all year. I mean, like if you happen to be someplace and you see this voucher sale on school supplies. I would assume so, yes. My understanding when I talked to her on the phone was that she does. We do that too at our house. It looks, yeah, it looks for those after school starts, those sales at Walmart and Kmart and those types of things when those um, extra go on sale. She's right, those are expensive. Okay. You know, one year I bought grams for 25 cents. I don't know if I want to see your coloring skills or not. <laughs> They're really bad. We do the same thing. And now, any other questions or comments about the uh, donations? In that case, is there a motion to approve the donations as given? So moved. I'm going to go with Tom first on that one, and I give you the chance I'll on the second. Second, second by Jim. <laughs> All in favor of approving the donations as given, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Overnight field trips for wrestling. I can lean on Adam here, Brad, but I believe that these are the standard field trips that Clint uh, submits every year for the wrestling team and, and the, his travels. The only one that's new is this is the first year that we've been invited to the North Montgomery Holiday Tournament, so that would be a new, uh, a new trip, but it's a Friday night, then on Saturday, all day tournament. It would not make sense for them to drive back to Rochester from there and go back and get the point. So they're choosing to stay overnight. We know Clint always has plenty of uh, chaperones and things available for that. And the uh, bottom one, are, that's kind of a prestigious thing that we've been invited to be a part of the Team State Wrestling Championship, which is, is an invitation only tournament. Based on our results from last year, we were invited to be a part of the tournament this year. That's also a two-day tournament. Any questions or comments for Adam on the overnight wrestling trips? In that case, is there a motion to approve the overnight field trips for wrestling? Second. Motion made by Sandy. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the overnight field trips for wrestling, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Information and analysis. School meal pricing for the 2018-19 school year. So every year our food service director has to make sure that we're in compliance with the Healthy Hungry Free Kid Act of uh, 2010. And they come in and they look at um, the different prices, those types of things. And so it was recommended this year that we move our adult lunches from $2.90 $2 to $3. Um, all of the student meals would remain status quo. You can see those as well. Uh, there is a necessary differential between your adult breakfast price and your student um, breakfast price, so we have that reflected there as well. So what this would do would bring us into compliance and essentially all of that information just boils down to a 10 cent increase to the adult lunch price. And none for students. None for students at all. Can everybody, can you see that back there? It's like my head's still on the way, Luke. <laughs> Any questions for Jane on the school meal pricing for the 18-19 school year? In that case, is there a motion to approve the school meal pricing for the 2018-19 school year with a dime increase to the adults and none for the students? Correct, right. that is correct. Just on the lunch prices. Just on the lunch prices. Is there a motion? Motion for the pricing for 2018-19 school year. Motion made by Tom. Is there a second? I second that. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the school meal pricing for the 2018 school year, 2018-2019 school year, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. The letter of intent to purchase two school buses. Let me turn this over to Denise and Todd as well. This is part of our um, bus replacement um, uh, information that you just saw in regards to the, the budget. Um, my understanding is if we sign the intent to purchase, that helps us reserve those buses, but also at a lower cost moving forward. Okay. They um, were anticipating a 5% increase uh, at a minimum of Curlin. Um, they've, um, Don has done due diligence and pricing and competitiveness like they're supposed to, and Curlin uh, told them that if we were to give them a letter of intent, 
to buy two school buses, we would be able to get them at the same price that they would be available now without the increase. And we will take delivery and pay for them after July 1st of next year. And historically, Kerlin has come in lowest, I believe, on the bids. Correct. So we're saving 5% based on bill common sense. At least. Any questions for Denise on that? Is there a motion to approve the letter of intent to purchase two school buses? So motion made by Stacy. Is there a second? Second. Uh, I'm going to go with Steve first. He gets, he's in my good ear right now. Those in, in, I'm sorry. If you, you've got me blistered. Again. Again. Those in favor of approving the letter of intent to purchase two school buses, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. If anybody can do it, Sandy, you can. I know. Okay. Approval to have a second preschool classroom. Hey Jason, please jump in at any point in time. We had a really good uh, meeting with um, Brandon Johnson with the Community Foundation. They have shared that they still have scholarship funds available. Um, we have a waiting list right now with about 13 children on it. We are still receiving phone calls with an interest to continue to grow that preschool program. Um, I've worked with Denise and Todd and they've assured me that the monies are there. We're tracking what that looks like, the offset of the, the uh, scholarship monies and grant monies that we will get from the community foundation, but just feel that need from the community to open up that second preschool space. Um, with the hopes of reaching those uh, 20 students, Jason and I think uh, we would both agree that even if we get close in that 16 or 17 range, we can better um, manage those numbers by bringing, right now we have 20 in the first preschool, if we come up a couple short, we could balance those classes just a little bit better. It's a little overwhelming to walk into a classroom of 20 four-year-olds who are doing a great job, but just really seeing that community need, that community push, and we have parents on a waiting list literally call me about once a week to check to see if this could come to fruition. So I would just like uh, the, the board to consider and approve that we move forward, continuing to collect that data, knowing that we have the classroom and have the funds, reaching out to those parents, um, hoping to begin this program with board approval the day that we return from Labor Day, which would be a Tuesday. That would give us plenty of time to make sure we have the, the transportation and the students to go ahead and move forward with this. But right now, the list would indicate, and the community would indicate that we can fill that second classroom. No, these kids are from Rochester, correct? We're pulling from other districts as well, and sometimes with them a sibling. So good. Maybe we can continue that for enrollment purposes right. and that's 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 good. Absolutely. Any questions for Jane on the approval to add a second preschool classroom? Where are we putting? <laughs> okay. Do you want to talk about that? I'm sorry. The about Where are we putting that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> We, we've got a, a classroom that uh, I'm not going to say it's vacant because we're utilizing it right now. Um, but uh, when we went down to six teachers in uh, first grade, uh, it, it made a uh, classroom available. So uh, we'll have to do some moving. Uh, our current um, People that are you or current teachers is using that classroom and move them to uh, to another room, but we, we do have a room available. But if we if we do this, I mean, we are maxed out. I mean, we we do not have if if our enrollment continues to go up and and things like that, we're going to seriously have to look at other options because I, I'll be totally out of room at that point. I mean, for even you know reading groups. And, my Title I teachers are, are maxed out. I mean, we're, we're, we are slap out of room. But if you guys <laughs> approve this, we'll make it happen. In a full-size classroom with a bathroom. <laughs> so, in, in the building. In the building. No, okay. <laughs> and I commend Jason and his crew. It's been a huge um, undertaking, and they've done a phenomenal job. And it's because of that that we have to Any further questions? 
Is there a motion to approve uh, the adding a second preschool classroom? So moved. I'm looking right at it. I know. Is there a second? Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving adding a second preschool classroom, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Memorandum of understanding with four counties. Working with the administrative team last year, and I want the gentleman to speak up at any point in time when they um, feel like they can contribute to the conversation. We have been able to bring in four county counselors in each of the buildings to work with students. Those students um, that can receive those services are those that qualify for Medicaid services. So we realize as an administrative team, there are still students that we are not able to provide services to and for who definitely need those mental health um, services. Um, but because of where parents are employed or insurance, they just don't qualify under the Medicaid. <coughs> so I've been working all summer with Four County and they came up with a proposal where they can uh, provide for us a counselor two days a week that we can utilize across the district. This counselor would be available for those students who do not currently have Medicaid, but parents agree that um, that service is um, a needed service and one that they would like to engage in. Additionally, this counselor can help with any adults in our district, um, faculty and staff that may want to utilize their counseling services, and I think we all feel the stressors from uh, the profession that we're in, so that would be available to them in conjunction with our current insurance policy. Um, our insurance uh, program that we have, that they would honor that and allow our employees to speak to those counselors as well. Um, with that, this uh, for those two days of service for a counselor to share across the district, including our adults, is an $11,000 expense to the district that we can take out of Medicaid funds. But um, Oscar just called uh, just this week with some students that could benefit from it, and I have no doubt that across the district that this would help them with those social, emotional, um, mental health concerns that we're seeing and it's a way for us to step up and meet those needs for a very little cost in school. Do you have the actual end of you? Yes, Rachel, I met with Rachel this afternoon. She looked over it. I don't know, Rachel, if you want to comment in regards to that. We looked over it. There really wasn't anything unusual about it. I didn't have any proposed changes or anything. Do you have a copy of it to be signed? Yes, I've got it. I've got a big dress. No, nothing, nothing unusual. Have we done this in the past? We have. We've signed MOUs with the current counselors that we have. We have them for a zebra tails <laughs> program at uh, the middle school. The relationship's been very good. Uh, administrators, if you want to talk about what you're seeing in your building and how those services are currently working. The med in my building, Medicaid is always a, a big stumbling block in terms of. Uh, who we can provide the services for and who we can. I mean, obviously the, the need is not dependent on what your insurance is, um, but unfortunately that's who we can provide to Fort County um, in the past. So um, I've already had two students that I've spoken with our Fort County rep uh, about seeing if they could provide services with this uh, proposed uh, addition uh, because neither one of those kids are um, eligible via uh, Medicaid. So, I mean, I've already got two lined up that if we can move forward with this, they can they can receive some, some services, so. I'd say the same at Riddle. I've looked into this as well when Jana mentioned it before, and there are times where students have Medicaid and for whatever reason it lapses, and so those services are then taken away, or, you know, the poor county's not able to serve them because they don't have Medicaid. So that's always unfortunate when a student is dependent upon this and needs it, and then for whatever reason, it, it's taken away until it can get back up. And that can take 30, 60, 90 days sometimes before their, their Medicaid's yeah. back in action. So that's been an issue. So this would be an excellent stopgap for that. If that were to happen, we've got this to back up. So like that. <laughs> it's frustrating to middle school. Student A and student B walk into the office with the exact same problem. Student A gets two ladies and Nate Kramer to help them, and student B can only have Mr. Kramer, and Mr. Kramer isn't gonna be able to spend the hours maybe that they can, the other students getting from our four county representatives. And our relationship in our building is amazing with the ladies that we have. 
Um, they already serviced several of our kids. As Janice said, I mean, I had one today that we could have easily put this person to work if we had that option. It would be a daily event in our building with a new person for them to see probably. And it, along the lines of school safety, this fight feeds right into it. I mean, if you are wanting school safety to be a priority, mental health is where it begins uh, a lot of times. So having as much mental health support have a provision then for something that, like Mr. Bernanke mentioned, that the student is working with the person assigned to Fort County in his building, from Fort County assigned to his building, and then it lapses, and so then does that student need to move to this other person from Fort County, or is Fort, is Fort County going to be flexible with that? Yeah, they're, they're flexible with that. They're, they always... Does it say who's been in charge of the program? Is it Dr. Cadwell? Is it you? Dr. Carrie Cadwell and I have been meeting in regards to the program. Actually, Nicole Hyatt Drake is the school liaison between the two. And Letitia Timmel is who they are proposing, um, allowing the district to use those two days a week. So it would be Mrs. Timmel that comes. Mm -hmm. okay. would be our so we have a relationship with her. Mm -hmm. Notice of the consternation that I'm just asking. Maybe I'm reading too far into it. Is this something you like to table so we can review the MOU? I have. I'm thankful that we have leadership that is looking for alternatives, looking for ways to bring in um, extra mental health services. I am sure. all for that. I usually like to read some people before I understand, and that's why I'm, I'm all <laughs> so in favor I don't of want, I'd like to be able to read it. I, but I hate to delay the services right, because of too. that. That's and I, we do put our trust in Mrs. Arndt as well, and I feel like she has read it and to see legal concerns, and those were the two things that just came up that I want to make sure were addressed about the sure. issue that Mr. Bernanke mentioned, and then also who would be the supervising person. Have you been a bit of an adequate answer for you? Except for not seeing it. She's double checking that. I have to look. I'll have to look. <laughs> now that I'm under pressure here, I'm good at that. Now, are we talking one extra person? Building or no, one, one, person, person. one person, two days a week. Um, if if the agreement was signed, they would send them in Monday to work with the administrative team to learn how we're going to schedule what those priorities might look like, who would qualify. We talked about making sure that parents are aware of that, working with the parents um, in conjunction with the services that are being provided. And they, will they be doing five days a week this one person? Two days. Two, I mean, two. Didn't we originally talk there was going to be two people? That, that's a different. We've got right. other programs right. where there, this won't take away any of the counselors who are currently in the district. It adds one lady two days a week across the district for those students who wouldn't qualify for the counselors that are currently in the buildings. Well, and I agree with Jenny. There, we need all that help we can get. We talked about not only the cost per se from the school safety standpoint, that's so huge. I just want to make sure we do our due diligence, but if Rachel says it's okay, I guess what's the cost difference? Is just the eleven thousand, or is it's eleven thousand, and it would be taken out of our Medicaid grant fund. Okay. So, um, for those who do have insurance, but for whatever reason haven't been able to secure a counselor with the transportation issue or whatever. Is Four County going to try and then bill insurance they through there? They work with their insurance, yes. Okay, well. and so that's in the MOU about bill, bill insurance? I don't remember it being a very specific about like, the individual insurance and who would be billed first, but I can go back and double check. And if you if you want us to include that in there, then we just counter back with, with the paragraph mm -hmm. language that, that you want to use. Well, I guess the bottom line for me is, is if we pay the $11,000 fee, are we going to get billed more for that if we have 20 students versus it's just $11,000? No, it's $11,000 whether it's adults using it, students using it, whoever's using it, that's the two-day service. Yeah. And then it's just one person per building. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
also be a benefit to our parents. They may not have to come get them and go to Plymouth, go to Fort Wayne, go to Livingsport. They can get what they need right here in the house. That's huge. Yeah. It is huge. Well, I think you're absolutely right on for this question. I just want to make sure you're in diligence on the billing and payments and things like that because if they can charge us 11 and get 500000 from an interest, <laughs> Um, because that's different than our Medicaid that we're working with, if that's all filled through Medicaid, and that's just a different process. Do we, I don't want to delay this any further. It than doesn't anything. have that language about, it doesn't have a procedure built in on how to bill first and who bills first. So I didn't know if like, then are we, like, are they going to bill or are we supposed to bill or, because I know that part of the paperwork we sign sometimes is we that have we done. bill Medicaid. Yeah, we never. But from like our, for our speech service, that's how we get Medicaid money is that we bill for some. Well, correct, for that, mm -hmm. to get that. But with our four county services, we've never. Now my understanding was that we would uh, just, I mean, provide them the names of the students and with the family check consent. with the Medicaid fees to determine which counselor to use and if it's the non-Medicaid council would not call it. Well, as long as they get the help they need and it doesn't cost us more and more and more. I mean, granted, there's a certain amount, uh -huh. and that's I want to see the kids, but any our, if our teachers need it, that they have that, uh, that opportunity. Definitely. Oh, I, I, I want to move forward with this for sure. In fact, I don't want to delay it, but I, I, I just wonder if that it part should be It seems to clear. me like the school is acting as a referral source for four county, allowing them to be in the school okay. and pay for the service. I'm not sure that the school really needs to be in the business of making sure that insurance coverage is in place. So, so I think that's more four county and their intake process to, to do, not, not the school. Um, so we can add well, in though. Paying four county $11,000. So is it clear in there that, <coughs> that um, regardless of insurance coverage, the students or staff will be uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. care of. Yeah, it's in here. Okay. Well, if they don't have Medicaid and they have to have the permission of the parents, then the insurance is taken care of there. I mean, the parents would have to provide the insurance. Some, some insurance will provide. You know. the, the other insurances do not provide. So if a parent or provide they, limited they, so many visits or some do it. Okay. So if a parent doesn't want to give their information, then they well, they'll still going to get served though. If the parent signs the release, then the counselor can work with yeah, them. But they don't right. want to use their insurance. Correct. So. Because in that case, they may have co-pays and so on. And so yeah. I just, it just is a sticky widget and without having it to see. Um, well, today is the 20th, and our next meeting is until the 4th. I'm okay with moving forward. I mean, you could always you could always approve it subject to final review from the board. So if, if you all review it and there's nothing wrong with it, then you move forward. If you review it and there's some questions and things that pop up, then, then we can make some changes. Okay. So if we approve it tonight, say we want to review it at like the study session or whatever, they can have these people in there on Monday. I don't see why not. Yeah, you're the legal. Yeah, I mean, Marty, you guys tell me. Okay. <laughs> tell me what you want to do. I want to see these kids and yeah. teachers if they need to get help. Yeah, then then just approve it subject to to review. If there are problems that pop up, then we can put it on the agenda for our next meeting and get it worked out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In that case, is there? I'm sorry. Is there any motion to? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to say, is there a motion? You see, no. Any other questions for either Rachel or Jane on that? In that case, is there a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding with Fort County subject to review of the MOU? Motion made by Stacy. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the memorandum of understanding with Fort County with the, uh, what's the term I'm looking for, Rachel? Subject to Subject review. to review. Do you want, Jenna, do you want to be in charge of emailing a copy to everyone? Sure, okay. absolutely. Uh, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Approval of one Wednesday night exception for Riddle, Riddle Drama Club. This is just one Wednesday night, right? It's not every Wednesday night. That is correct. Um, and I think that, Luke, if you want to share 
as well, but Brittany Piercy is offering to start a, a drama club at uh, Riddle for those students. And so they're looking, um, since this is a new endeavor on Riddle's part and with that club, we're trying to work with the calendars that already exist athletically and with the fine arts across the district. And um, with all of that being said, until we can get them as a regular there on that calendar as well, their production date, they were looking at availability and obviously those open up on those Wednesday evenings. So they're asking for one exception. And then moving forward, we would do our best to incorporate it on a weeknight so that they have the auditorium and everything available to them. Questions or comments for either Jane or Luke? I'm so excited. It is exciting. It, it is exciting, exciting, but whenever I see drama, I have a teenage daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I realize this is real. I know it's different. There's but drama in I get it. You're right. <laughs> but still, it's, I think it's a great thing, too. I do. It's yes. drama scares me. It's an extension of the arts. I couldn't agree more. Is there a motion to approve the one Wednesday night exception for the Riddle Drama? <coughs> No. Motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving the one Wednesday night exception for rural college staff is in your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Personnel reports. Hiring J.C. Denton for Columbia Instructional Assistant for Special Needs. So good Special Needs Instructional Assistant at Riddle and Middle Schools. Randy Lout. Middle School Instructional Assistant for Special Needs. Did I see your last name correctly, Mr. Haas? Mm -hmm. Retirement. Terry Bowers, Language Arts, Grade 8, effective August 8, 2018. Assignments. Dan Bailey, RMS Building Monitor. Kenzie Collins, RMS Yearbook Sponsor. John Walkman, RMS CIA Coach. Lisa McMillan, RMS One-to-One -one Mentor for Sammy Martin. Lori Shane, RMS One-to-One -one Mentor for Nate Basham. Misty Kreit, RMS One-to-One -one Mentor for Liam Rumpel. Kyle Renatus, RMS 1 to 1 mentor for Tristan Wilson. Morning Mignet, RMS 1 to 1 mentor for Allison Butler. And Stephanie Brown, K through 12 high ability coordinator. High school extracurriculars, Sydney Goodman and Brittany Piercy, co directors for the RHS Tri Epsilon Drama Club for 2018 19 school year. Recommendation to combine the stipend for the director and the co director and split it evenly between the two co directors. Riddle extracurricular, Brittany Piercy, drama club. Resignation, Robin Robin Rayburn, paternity leave for Linda Hart, effective August 15, 2018. So Robin is resigned. And then Stephanie Clark, food service at Riddle. Information added Friday, hiring Kevin Reinhold as a bus driver. And then information added today at 3 o'clock, hiding Melanie Black, hiring Melanie Blackburn for food service cook at Riddle. Fall intercession, Bethany Sewell for Columbia Grade 2. Hope Zimmerman, Columbia Grade 1. Kyman Day, Columbia Kindergarten, Michelle Yeager, Columbia Instructional Assistant. Any questions for Jana on the personnel? Excuse me. I want to know what a building monitor is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mentor. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had a building mentor. Is the, I wonder if he got like a yeah, safety vest or something. He was going to hook him up. <laughs> is the rest of the, because a lot of these are dear, or new teachers of the other schools going to have, have mentors? Yeah, they're working on <laughs> Just ask. Yeah. It's okay. But Mr. Snyder does get the gold star for the fall. Well, unless there are hearts, I mean, you can challenge out where you're asking mentors. What are you not seeing Columbia rolling out the early intercession recommendations? You can't see what this crew's working on for fall enrichment activities across the district. It's getting to be pretty exciting. So it does not surprise me that they're already thinking about these teachers. It's refreshing to have it before the back rather than after the back. So. Yeah, that is kind of different. So yeah. are the mentors getting like a stipend or are they just doing this out of? No, they, there's a site, there's money set aside in the ECA okay. for that. Any other questions for Mrs. Vance? Um, Will there be ECA money then for Mrs. Piercy for the drama club? Yes. Well, I like to mention it. Anyway. Is there a motion to approve the personnel report as given? So moved. Motion made by Jim. Sorry. Steve's right on the right good ear, man. <laughs> 
Those in favor of approving the personnel report as given, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 to 0. Up next is the approval of the administrative contract renewals, and they were off a little bit because of reviewing and things like that. Um, I know we as a board would like to review those, and so I'm going to ask that we table that and have a motion to table those till we can review those. It has nothing to do with the administrative contracts. We just make sure we're doing our due diligence and making sure everything's spot on as far as the board's concerned. So that's going to be my request for that. If there's a different opinion, you may certainly make a different motion. So is there a motion to table the approval? Is it Mrs. Mansion, would you like to add anything? To no, I appreciate um, Rachel's time that I shared with the administrative team part of the MOU and part of the <coughs> administrative contracts as Rachel and I schedule just matched up this afternoon. So um, no, I appreciate because Rachel brought up a couple of good points that I need to talk to the administrative team about and I need to consider and think about as well. So. And I just want to reassure the administrators this has nothing to do with them. It's a matter of timing. We as would like to do our due Correct. diligence and review those. And Rachel and I schedule just matched up at 3 o'clock this afternoon and realized that there were more things to discuss. So. so is there a motion to table the approval of the administrative contract renewals? So moved. Motion made by Stacy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of tabling the approval of administrative contract renewals, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. <coughs> Superintendent business. If the board would allow, I would like to add, we just got all of the information in, and this is another thing that Rachel and I were working on this afternoon in regards to the Columbia um, parking lot and that addition that we got that bid in from e and Paving and that uh, information was sent through an email to the board. Um, one of the concerns that we have run into, and I know Rachel has calls in to Casey again just to verify, is the information that was sent to you, and I can get that to Christina, and that um, the, the state now uh, calls for a separation of stormwater from sewage water and that drainage, so we're going to have to put in that extra storage area for, for that stormwater. Um, when I came back this afternoon, I found that the um, business office was sending on some information that I gave to Rachel as well as far as making sure that we were in compliance with the permit and what Casey was calling for, what the state is calling for, and making sure that, that that matched up. So all of the numbers that you have then would be um, what we would be looking at and working with with e and Paving. Also part of the price differential is that we were able to take the parking lot from a 34 space parking lot up to a 42 space parking lot once we got all of the boundaries and markers and the way that the configuration would go. So um, you should have that, e that information through email and the board would allow would like to move forward with approving that bid so we can start that project through the bond monies. To be fair, is there any issue with making sure that there's adequate notice on that so we make sure the community knows what we're doing? Or in as a board, um, is there any issue with us getting the information? Would you like time to think about that? Put that out there as well. Yeah, I do have a call in to, to Casey just to, just to talk through part of the email concern and then just make sure everything's where it needs to be because I think there's some question about that right now. So can we do this approval with the motion to review later like we did with the Fort County MOU? I, I just have a concern as board members. I don't want us to make a decision rash, rashly. I think this is something that you probably should table it until we have all the answers. I, I don't want to put anything in here with the bid process. And I have quite a few questions for Casey just to make sure what we're hearing is correct. So yeah, I, I would recommend that you table it. I realize that might cause a delay, but. Well, I'm not playing you off each other because I want to ask her how is this going to affect us getting that parking lot done this year than if we do table? Might, depending on how long it's tabled, it would move up from October to the possibility of December start date and then with the weather uncertainty. So, you know, I, we kind of talked about that on the email this afternoon a little bit. Uh, Ted came up with a good idea of uh, running a tile to the pond. If we could do away with that whole system under the parking lot, we're talking a lot of money. Right. Savings there. And uh, that could be done pretty easy. So that, that I, would, I would think that'd be something to look into. And it would probably, if we put in a storm or a storm sewer over there, that would probably make three in that entire neighborhood. Three storm sewers. That right. 
But since we, you know, we have magnet pond there anyway, yeah. that would make a great retention pond. To, you know, to capture that storm water off that lot. And you wouldn't have to have that whole system underneath there to absorption field under the parking lot. Something we could do with further reviews, maybe do a special board meeting before the study session too, if we're talking. Because I understand the need, I'd rather do it right, but I also understand the need for timing with weather too. Sure. But I'd rather do it right and save us the money if there are other alternatives. But we're a board of seven, not one. So is there a motion someone would like to make? I'll move that we take a look at the next meeting. Motion made by Steve to table the parking lot of Columbia. To the Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving tabling the motion, in, or I'm sorry, tabling the parking lot at Columbia until the next meeting. Please signify by raising your right hand. Okay. Okay. Question. Nope. One please question. do. I'd rather you know. When you say next meeting, that could possibly be at a special board meeting. Before a study session. session. But I want to make sure yeah. that we advertise correctly. I'd rather we play above board on the rules and try to show something through and yeah. Yeah. but yeah that we could that's definitely possible as long as we advertise it for the september 4th september 4th, september 4th study session we have a special board meeting if we needed to can you ask about the um, does that give advice a little bit of time with maybe not shoving back our date too long that way we can i think that's a good idea good good no, no, I, I, just, I just didn't want to push it off too I far. agree. It's, it's a balancing act here. Yeah. All in favor of approving the table of the Columbia School parking lot until the next board or special board meeting, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. More superintendent's business. Um, I want to thank um, both Derek Holloway and David Heidi for their constant communication in regards to the water projects that are going on in our transportation they've done a great job communicating so that our drivers can get the kids to school safely and without um, those hang-ups on those back roads that might be closed but they have been wonderful in communicating and then lastly before we go we talked at the beginning of the year on opening day about the challenge points that tcu had given out and and what those mean to the district and and how we all need to strive to reach those criteria in regards to inspiring individuals to learn grow and give the district knows we're giving those out sparingly to those who rise above and beyond so i'd like to take a minute just to issue two of those coins tonight to two people that are very much deserving of those one is to denise and denise continually comes forward every time we ask she answers those questions and there's nothing better than hearing her contagious laughter every morning in the office area. So I want to thank Denise and give her a challenge point this evening for all that she's done for the district. Not just this and then the fact goes to a gentleman that I think the administrative team would um, support me on Scott Kistler who goes above and beyond always with a smile he bails out of trouble all the time I think he bails the gentleman out of trouble all the time <laughs> and he always laughs as he turns around I'm pretty sure he rolls his eyes at me but I appreciate everything Well, and I need to rely some on Jason with the challenge coin because there's a lot of information that you can find on the internet in regards to um, challenge coin and what it means and I believe that it started within the military branches and that a challenge coin is one for which there's really not a medal that can, can distinguish or to honor that because you can never know what a person's going to give to their team, to their corporation, to their designated branch of honor that they serve in so an honor or a challenge coin is just to to signify that they have gone above and beyond in that call of duty and the job that they're doing but there isn't that medal that you can award them so you provide them with that challenge coin for going above and beyond now mr snyder on that if they don't present their challenge coin when offered we can't say on video what they have to do right and I've heard that too. <laughs> it's actually violating. Well, we might be violating some sort of code, some sort of a <laughs> buy around the drinks. We'll just say Coke in this point. In this, in this no, it's it's a uh, it's a, a tradition that steeps very uh, deeply into the military history, and uh, it is something. I mean, you, you can you can do the, the research on it, and uh, to, to find out exactly where it came from, uh, there's a little bit of uncertainty, but. Um, uh, you know, you can look back into the Vietnam War, uh, and, and it was a very common thing at that point. Uh, they, would, they would be passed along. Um, 
your your leadership would hand those out to their soldiers and uh, like like Mrs. Vance said, you know, it's it was for for just a, a, a doing their job and doing it extremely well and maybe not something that would earn them a, a medal. Um, and then uh, you, you carry those things around and you know you run into that leader several years later and show them that coin and you know it's it's a it's a meaningful thing. Um, it, it's a way to, to show appreciation to your subordinates and the people that you work with and. Uh, and I think it's really, uh, really great that we're bringing that kind of into our, you know, education, uh, our team that we work with here, uh, just because it, uh, it it shows appreciation for for doing a great job and and uh, being a part of our team. So I think it's, I think it's really good. Thank you for allowing me the time to do that. And TCU has generously donated about 200 coins that we can give out through the course of the year to those that we recognize that have gone above and beyond. So I do appreciate both of you. So thank you. You know, somewhat sacred we do it with the state police as well. It's very, it's quite an honor. So congratulations and well deserved. That's all I have. Any public comments? Anything from the board? I just want to know if Tim is happy tonight. Is there any further business to discuss? In that case, we'll consider the meeting adjourned.